this video we're going to be talking all things Daisy Jones and the Six. If you've been watching Daisy Jones and the Six on Amazon Prime, let me know in the comments below. If you've been listening to the album on Spotify, let me know which is your favourite songs. And also, if you've read the book that this is based on, this is a series adaptation of a book of the same name. My partner really loved the book last year and we're thrilled that it's been made as, as a series. I wanted to, in this video, talk about the songs mainly and then how they kind of compare to Fleetwood Mac's rumours because this whole series and the original book and the songs on the album Aurora is inspired by Fleetwood Mac and in particular Rumours. So it's 100% fictional and inspired by the kind of Laurel Canrian music scene, which I didn't know the term for until I started researching this video with the help of Nina. This is the LA scene of music in the late 60s to mid 70s, the kind of counterculture of all that. And it's kind of everything that <laughs> kind of people who are into rock music like me, that's what we want the music industry to still be in many ways. Make it like the 70s in Southern California. It's just the best. And any series or movie that's based on this era and this side of music is always something that gets me really excited and I always check out. This stars Riley Keough as Daisy, uh, Riley Keough is Elvis's granddaughter, and it stars Sam Claflin as Billy Dunn, amongst many others. But it is the songs we're going to be focused on. Now, these songwriters and producers basically had the task, as I understand it, of writing the songs based on the material in the book, but they decided not to use the lyrics from the book. I think they decided to write uh, a lot of their own lyrics for these songs. But they were tasked with writing a song that's supposed to be kind of like Rumours, but not. And I want to discuss how close some of these got and kind of dig into some of this. These songs were produced and composed by a bunch of accomplished artists, including Lake Mills, who's a musician in his own right and producer on a bunch of stuff, such as John Legend and Jack Johnson, apparently. Jackson Brown, who's a legendary singer and guitarist, Grammy nominated, and Marcus Mumford from Mumford and Sons. So the opening track of the album is Aurora. This is loosely based on Fleetwood Mac, I reckon, and it's in the same key, it's in the key of F, and Aurora kind of goes like this. There's some other sections, but that, that's the main riff of it, and go your own way. It's kind of, so it's the same key, it's the same BPM and broadly the same chords. F, B flat, and C. I'm playing all of these as bar chords, of course you can use capos to make it a bit more like um, the original maybe on Fleetwood Mac. The fact it uses the one, four, and five, and the kind of bright sounding guitars give it a bit of a feel of secondhand news as well, a bright opening to the album, just like Rumours does. So that was something I always expected when I'd heard of the book first and I knew they were making a series of this. But then every one of these songs always kind of does something unique, which is one of the things I most enjoyed about it. There's some really cool surprises in it. Uh, and one part of this, which isn't really referencing any Fleetwood Mac song in my opinion, is the kind of kind of think I want to make it last forever Oh, I kind of think I want to make it last forever And that continues later in the song, which is just kind of on a C power chord Where did you turn? Where did you turn? Needed to miss, needed to miss I mean, the best thing about the, all of the songs, the performance of them, is this vocal and the performances of the main two singers. We have a male vocal and a female vocal kind of sharing the lead parts. And there's not many bands that do it. Yes, we got Fleetwood Mac. Yes, there are some kind of classic, you know, songs that have are a male-female duet. But when you think about it, there's not actually that many. And I think the reasons are covered strongly in this show. So let's have a look at another one. Next up is Let Me Down Easy, and I'm gonna grab the electric guitar for this one. So this one, in my opinion, uh, is very much based on... Rhiannon, which we have a full tutorial on as well. These double stops from Rhiannon over a root note, kind of giving the impression of an A minor chord, are echoed in 
echoed in the lead parts of uh, Lay Me Down Easy, but in this case it's over a D chord. C power chord to a G power chord. Super fun to have a play around with. But then of course it's never staying on the electric guitar too long. We have this really strong acoustic guitar led chorus, really sing alongable with the male and female leads harmonizing. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love all this kind of stuff. If you're gonna let me down, let me down easy. If you're gonna let me down. If you're gonna let me down, let me down easy. If you're gonna let me down. Oh, don't you gonna tell me that you love me while you're leaving. If you're gonna leave it now. Oh, if you gonna let me down, let me down easy. If can't cover them all so the next one I'm going to cover is Look At Us Now Honeycomb which is highly based on the chain. Now imagine being tasked with trying to write a song that references the chain but isn't just the worst version of it, like stands on its own and I think this one really does. The intro finger picking is quite reminiscent um, and then we have uh, basic open chords really so just looking at the basic open chords first of all because some of you guys might want to learn this. We have a C chord. <laughs> I don't know who I am, E minor. Baby, baby, baby. This is a G major to D major. And if you can play those chords, you can play this song. Is it out of our hands? Tell me, tell me, tell me how we made it this far. And then the second progression in this, A minor, C major, E minor, G. And this is basically referencing the Da 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 We can make a good thing back oh, We can make a good thing bad And a lot of people are really liking and I am too this uh, this picked intro so let me try and play it for you And then later in the song we have this lead line which is just lifted from the chain really, apart from it adds a hammer on from three to fifth and when it slides up it doesn't do the kind of it doesn't play the melody that he does, um, Lindsay Buckingham, but this is one of the best lead guitar lines ever and this is based on it. So the chain lead line is just based on this one E note, just played on eights. One and two and three and four and one and two and three slid up. So what's that? 17 frets. That kind of thing, that's the chain. And look at us now. It does this for quite a while. Then it does it here at the 12th and 10th fret and then at 17 and 15 but he never does the bend so that's where I guess the I guess you can't copyright one note if we look at that intro of the chain as well that is quite reminiscent of You know, it's, a, it's got a similarity in the other chords that it goes to, where would it be in this key? It is reminiscent of it. Anything else you want to know about that one, let me know uh, in the comments below. That's probably the one I would do a full tutorial for if I was. But I do want to cover one more song from this, which is Regret Me. It's actually the biggest one on Spotify at the time of filming this video anyway. Really basic open chords, which we'll cover in a second. But I want to look at this lead line, which is so fun. <laughs> A 
Lyrically, we reckon this one's based on Silver Springs. The coolest thing about this, it's not really based on anything other than that era. This is one of the era, and it just sounds exactly like a song from there. This run. All of that is just so fun to play, and it just speaks of the... Uh, I guess they were just inspired to do it. I don't know who wrote this one, but it, it's just a quality lead line. So to, just to talk you through it, zero, three, slide five to seven, which is quite common, but we can drop the tune in here. Then another five to seven bend again. So we've got these little... Those little pockets of like a little slide by two frets and back on itself. Which is actually how I worked it out. I kind of, I got the first one kind of like that, like really note for note. And then after that, I was like, it just sounds like these two fret slides and I, I just stay to the dots through it. If you, stay, if you stay to where the inlays are. You can book out that whole lead line, little bend at the end. Super fun. But the chords to it, dead easy. The chords to Regret Me are D minor, A minor, E minor, G major, and C major. It's a tune, it's an absolute tune. The only other thing I'll say is watch the whole series all, all the way to the end. The ending is amazing. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful to you. Let me know any other similar videos to this where we might want to pick out an album or music from you know TV and movies. Let me know in the comments below and let me know your favorite bits of Daisy Jones and the Six and I'll see you next time.